and assuming that someone who has experienced anxiety in a relationship and is unable to leave it must suffer from an anxious attachment style. I mean, the same person can feel incredibly anxious in one relationship, feel incredibly secure in another. So boundaries were meant to help people figure out how they could feel safe in a relationship. Uh, in any kind of exchange with other people where they could have their own needs and concerns attended to while also making room for the other person's like can i please tell you this morning i opened my social media one of the platforms oh, that i'm one of know? the many platforms that i'm on opened it and there's all these posts popping up and i'm just scrolling through and there was a post that said um you know psychologists now say that if you watch true crime you're actually depressed it's a sign <laughs> of depression and i'm like but there was a post literally a week ago where psychologists were telling me no true crime watcher you you are healthy you are a great person and you you know you you've got it all together and i'm just like who are these psychologists <laughs> and who who are these yeah, people are these and why are they generalizing everything and Man, what's going on I think this is a fantastic conversation because I'm not, I have fallen guilty to this myself the constant self-diagnosing from TikTok and Instagram psychologists or whatever people are posting like like you said true crime is apparently a sign of something the temperature of your shower is a sign of something what side you put your part on is a sign of, I have so many things I do I have, and then I do diagnose myself and I'm like, all right, we finally figured it out why I'm such a weirdo. Today, we're going to talk about social media and the oversimplification of psychology. And for that, specifically, we have with us our resident, yeah. because I'm now making you our resident therapy expert who comes and gives us group therapy. Yeah. <laughs> Anam. I'm doing all right. Thanks for coming back. Uh, thanks for having me. Good. <laughs> you are very welcome. Uh, so this is a conversation we are very excited to have. Um, but we also know it can be, it's a complex conversation. Yeah, yeah. it's a very tell, complex, very yeah. sensitive conversation. Do you conversation. want to tell us why it is a bit sensitive? Um, mostly because there are so many different opinions on this. There's so much noise around this. Uh, but yeah, once we get into once that, we, we get kind into of, it. we get into it. So our, in general terms mm. okay we see a lot of random words being thrown mm -hmm. online uh, i've come across so many uh, um, uh saba lives online so she's definitely come across so many i always say my house is, <laughs> is twitter <laughs> literally and if I, my dream is to literally be a recluse who has wi-fi <laughs> like that would be the dream. what are some terms that you've come across recently that uh you're like hey stop encroaching on my you know literally on my career and my my industry mm. you shouldn't be throwing these terms out mm. just like that really, really. on yeah so a couple of years ago the terms narcissist gaslighting toxic they started trending um i think there were about like 3.8 billion hashtags every time kind of, like B. looked up yeah, yeah. narcissist yeah. on tiktok and stuff and triggered as well there were just a lot of terms that suddenly made their way into like mainstream language with no real sort of understanding of the nuance and complex, like the complexity around these terms. They were thrown around to explain behaviors that basically just pe that people didn't like. Yeah. Um, so, for example, triggered. Triggered was essentially triggers were something that arose in the understanding of PTSD and how that could kind of like bring back the trauma for people who had PTSD. Um, it was never meant to be a tactic for avoiding all difficult situations, mm. anything that hurt someone. And eventually it kind of became like a way for people to avoid talking about things that were painful for them to look at or hear. It was just like, okay, this is triggering. I'm out. Yeah. yeah. Um, instead of acknowledging like, okay, this is really painful for me to hear. I'm, I'm hurt. I'm scared. I feel rejected when I hear these things. Um, I'm yeah. going to say, I I uh, am ashamed to say this now that I'm sitting next to you and you're explaining all of this to me, uh, that I have used the term willy-nilly, as we say. I have thrown the term out there where I've listened to some song or whatever and I haven't liked it or whatever and I'm like, oh, this is triggering me. Whereas now that you're speaking on this, mm. I 
now I'm feeling really, really bad because I'm like, no, I didn't <laughs> really think this through. <laughs> like, yeah, because I jumped on a huge shame. I didn't, I never actually thought, I and normally, generally, when you go through life, there's terms that pop up that everyone... Become then, part of the the lexicon the of like pop culture. Absolutely, whatever, where yeah. pop culture, exactly. Yeah. So you, there'll be things that like, one somebody comes back and starts saying and then all the other friends will start saying it and it just become a thing and we don't realize the impact it has there could be a fourth person in the room who actually it gets traumatized from that term but mm. we we don't yeah. think of these things. trauma was another one right mm -hmm. there's just been this ongoing debate online about what actually constitutes trauma right and yes, it's not fair to tell someone that something that has genuinely disturbed them isn't traumatic. But at the same time, it can also undermine other people's experience who have gone through really, really horrific things. Absolutely. Yeah. So where do you draw that line? Well, also, yeah. um, I mean, I feel kind of silly for saying this, but I didn't really make the connection. Now that you've said it, obviously it makes sense that trigger came from PTSD. Mm. I also think PTSD is quite flippantly thrown around yes. um, quite a bit because actually it is horrific if you're going through it and stuff. A big one that you've already mentioned that I've seen is narcissist. And mm -hmm. I feel like there, I once read something like this whole breakdown of this woman, Reddit. Reddit's another one that I'm very late to the game, but like Reddit psychology will also grab mm -hmm. you in. Um, and she, this person was talking about their partner and their narcissism and all these things. And I'm reading it and I'm looking at my sister and reading it and I'm like, am I a narcissist? Like, am I a narcissistic mm -hmm. abusive partner towards you? So then I was like on the internet frantically trying to figure it out, called two of my friends who work in medical field and I'm like, guys, like, <laughs> I think I'm a, turns out, I'm not, no. Which um, is irresponsible. Yeah. Yeah, it's irresponsible, but also we've pathologized narcissism. That doesn't understand that it's actually a very prevalent social phenomenon. Like every single person has some degree of narcissistic tendencies. Phew. Thank goodness. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> See? See, it's not just me. <laughs> and that doesn't mean that we don't look at it. We don't call it out. But doing so in a social context is important then instead of just like looking at it, looking at every individual as, oh, my God, this is also a narcissist and this is also a narcissist. And now I must therefore distance myself because there's like too many red flags. Yeah, it, it dehumanizes a lot of people. And it's a very compelling idea to kind of like think of someone who has shown who has caused harm who has very little regard for other people's experience and feelings to call them a narcissist because it's kind of validating of your own experience. But just the sheer prevalence of it mm -hmm. kind of calls into question the idea of creating this separate category of people instead of looking at this as a facet of human nature. Well, actually, I think that's a great segue because you said as creating a separate facet of people. We've actually, I believe, in this boom of social media, created a separate language altogether. And yeah. one of the languages that they have kind of pulled from is, of course, therapy, therapy speak. speak. Mm -hmm. right. Could you explain what therapy speak for me and everyone else out there that doesn't mm -hmm. know what it, what in simple terms? Therapy speak was, I mean, it was initially terms that were used to help clients make sense of different experiences. So, for example, the term gaslighting, when it was first introduced, it was to help people come to terms with the idea that this is something people can do. Yeah. Because otherwise they'd be left questioning their own kind of experience, their own um, sense of reality. And just to add, because gaslighting is a form of like covert abuse, yes. right? Um but what, so I mean, sorry, coming back to this, there are other terms as well, such as boundaries, mm -hmm. uh, which was meant to help people kind of figure out guidelines for protecting their own interests while also taking into account another person's needs and wants. Right. Um, similarly, what's another one? There's gaslighting, there's, uh, what did I just say? Toxic. Boundaries. There's boundaries. toxic. There's boundaries. Then there were actual diagnoses of like ADHD and helping yeah. people understand where, you know, like how their behaviors could be explained through right. the lens of that. What ended up happening was these things made their way to Instagram, yeah. which started off with good intentions because there were, especially during COVID, a bunch of mental health practitioners 
decided to make this information more accessible to people mm-hmm. who didn't normally like, generally have access to therapy. What it very quickly kind of turned into was people taking on these terms without any understanding of the nuance behind them, of the, sort of that contextual understanding and using them in everyday language, yeah. using Means. that to make sense of everything that happened. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the it's raining today, so I'm triggered, triggered or yeah. depressed yeah. or, you yeah. know, throwing terms out like yeah. just like that. Um, and so attachment styles, that's another one. Yeah. Avoidant and anxious. It's been used to understand everything without actually like distinguishing between different circumstances that lead to those. I also get yeah. that test, right? Because I'm constantly trying to figure out why I'm not married and retired as yet. And I took that test and like it, it there's no nuance. It was so generalized. And trust me, I took it on many websites because I was like, what is my attachment style? And it was like, none of this really applies to me. And I also think. You, when you said it earlier, dehumanizing, like mm. there are humans that you were talking about and mm. you're, you cannot uh, copy, paste and apply everything to everyone. Just yeah. like just because the commonality is, let's say if we're talking about relationships, you're dating me. It doesn't mm. mean that it's always going to be the same yeah. just because that's there. Does that and make assuming sense? Like, that someone me. who has experienced anxiety in a relationship and is unable to leave it must suffer from an anxious attachment style. I mean, the same person can feel incredibly anxious in one relationship, feel incredibly secure in another. Which, which is, is what happens. You know. Yeah. Which is, yeah. You're like, which good is, one. Yeah. <laughs> this one makes, I'm normal. I don't feel insane with this yeah. one. Yeah. Um, I wanted to bring it back to boundaries. Mm. Okay. It's because I believe I have misunderstood what it means. Mm. I think a lot of people don't understand what exactly a boundary is. Mm. Could we get into that a little bit? Sure. And then we're going to talk about Jonah Hill and boundaries. I'm so excited about it. I love talking about celebrity gossip that's 12 months old, you know? So boundaries were meant to help people figure out how they could feel safe in a relationship, uh, in any kind of exchange with other people, where they could have their own needs and concerns attended to, while also making room for the other person's like, needs and, and wants in that what a lot of people ended up doing was ignoring the second piece of that puzzle. And so it became all about, well, this is how I operate. These are my boundaries. You cannot cross those boundaries. They're not meant to be these like rigid uh, things that are, are purely one-sided. They're meant to be porous. Of course, they're going to be pushed from time to time. Yeah. Uh, let's take an example of someone who say, cancels plans last minute. And so I was like, okay, but I'm sorry. I'm like looking after myself right now. Don't, don't question me on that another one is people who take space so space in conflict is such a it seems like such a valid thing to ask for and this one really really bothers me because it's been weaponized quite a bit if the need for space comes up in every conflict okay fine it's troubling for someone to kind of have someone confronting them with things And they might need to take time to regulate themselves, uh, to regulate their emotional states. But does that mean that you're actually just like taking what's what you need? Or are you also running away from what's a difficult conversation to have? So I actually seen couples counseling told her that like it's my sister told her that, you know, I appreciate that you don't like confrontation mm. and that you need a little space, mm. gather yourself, figure out how you want to talk. Mm. But you need to appreciate that I'm on the other end of this, throuplifying that this needs to end. So like we need mm. to have that you take space, mm. but you also respect the fact that there's a loony over there who's, I mean say loony in the most loving of ways. I'm a narcissist. So there's <laughs> me sitting there being like, we need to end it. Like we need to mm. meet in the middle there. Mm. Because I think, um, that was kind of being used against me as like, well, yeah. you're passionate about this in the moment and you're not mm. respecting that I need time. Yeah. But when time finished, there was no resolution. It was just, mm. you want to eat food? And I'm like, come on, we have something to discuss. And you're not loony because leaving yeah. someone in that space of uncertainty and helplessness where they have absolutely no means of achieving resolution until the other person's decided, okay, now I can come back and talk about it when I'm ready. That That's a power dynamic at play. 
Can you please clip that so I can send it to my family group chat? Thank you. <laughs> I'm like, that's literally what I keep trying to explain is I'm like, just because I'm louder, yeah. it doesn't mean I'm actually yeah. holding the power here. Like I'm a, now we're therapizing. And sorry, another buddy. one, sorry. The, sorry, the, I, I'm just going to say the one that I hear the most mm -hmm. around me is, oh, this person was being, this person's showing toxic behavior. This person's being toxic. So I've set boundaries. Mm -hmm. And what, what I, from my perspective, being on the outside, seeing all of this go down, I'm thinking, no, you haven't actually set a boundary because you're not moving the boundary front or back. Mm. You've just put a wall up mm. and you've completely isolated that person mm. out of your life without actually, the, nothing is resolved. Mm. So you're both going through life as separate individuals now mm. whereas before you were friends. And mm. that person who doesn't really understand what's happened they're like, what the hell just happened? Mm. And I won't lie. Like, I've definitely been the kind of person where I'm just like, you know what? It's over for me. Like, mm. I don't really want to deal with this anymore. And I don't feel like I need to explain myself. Yeah. But I think now in this age, mm. I'm like, you know, I don't think I like feeling that way. I don't want to make other people feel that mm. way. Can you give an example of like a healthy boundary that makes sense? A healthy boundary would be one that takes into consideration both parties' needs. Right. So, yes, someone can understand that, OK, if I if a conflict comes up, if a direct confrontation comes up for some people, genuinely their body shuts down and they cannot communicate from that space. Fair enough. But also make room for the consideration that if you leave things indefinitely open, mm. that's causing a lot of ongoing anxiety for the other person that is not giving them any agency in that situation. Also, if you constantly dictate the terms on which their displeasure is communicated to you. So, for example, um, you have to use soft language. You can bring up my flaws, but do so very, very gently. That doesn't actually give them a lot of room to express their anger or don't yeah. don't raise your voice. Yeah. Right? One of the That's things that I took one. away from the last episode uh, when you were here was when you said that, look, if you are feeling angry, then be angry angry take up anger is also an emotion yeah. and we should own that emotion yeah. because it's coming out of you yeah. don't push it down don't yeah. stifle it yeah. and honestly it sat with me because yeah. that's the one emotion that i have yeah. so now i'm just like feeling very it's valid yeah. <laughs> one this is the one that comes up more often um but uh i'm telling you you come back for a third time group therapy. Yeah. um but no in all seriousness it sat with me and i actually thought th thought it through and i was like why do i keep telling myself not to feel the anger mm -hmm. why do i keep pushing it down because it eventually does bubble up and explode mm -hmm. out of me um I want to actually also talk about the fact that coming back to social media and mm -hmm. how these terms are just thrown around, mm -hmm. the irresponsibility of it all, mm -hmm. where you have these young kids, because we see these young kids mm -hmm. and how uh, we're working with them. So mm -hmm. we know they use a lot of these terms very loosely. And mm -hmm. I, I can see them, I can see other uh, kids, Gen Z kids who are affected by it mm -hmm. and then they like kind of close down and we discussed this uh, yeah. previously as well so how, what is the effect that it's having on the kids that are consuming all of this yeah so it's so scary to be labeled as a narcissist mm -hmm. to be labeled as someone who's gaslighting or emotionally manipulating another person or who's not like respecting another person's need for space and is coming across as overbearing that's a very very scary scary category to be put in because labels stick even the right? word abusive I yeah. Think, yeah, yeah and what it's doing is it's actually leading to a lot of overcorrection, where now people are sort of walking on eggshells trying to not offend people trying mm -hmm. to not say anything that could come across as potentially offensive to a broad category of people or insensitive of someone's mental health and that in turn has led to a backlash right. against that uh, from you know sort of anti-woke culture people who are saying like well okay i don't want to be constantly monitoring my words i don't want to be constantly like taking into account every single person's triggers my grandmother literally is like yeah. these kids are offended by everything everything yeah. every time i open my mouth one of the grandkids is like oh that's offensive yeah. she's like how am i supposed to have a conversation with them yeah and like that's two generations, right? Yeah. So imagine what's happening in schools or imagine mm -hmm. what's happening in in just generally amongst like friends. And mm -hmm. so I completely understand 
the pushback. Yeah, and because it's constantly changing that landscape, so especially with like new ideas that are becoming more mainstream around gender fluidity or sexual fluidity, it's very very difficult for someone who hasn't been exposed to that at all to just kind of like automatically accept, okay, this is how things are. Hmm. Yes, it's not about it's it doesn't make it right. Yes, it is absolutely unfair to a lot of people. However. it doesn't leave room for people to learn from those mistakes if they are constantly scared of getting cancelled yeah or you know, shut out um, for having said the wrong thing absolutely when i was um uh, in orth march one of the phrases um mera jisme meri marzi which means my body my choice is literally just about autonomy relax I, me saying this in a sleeveless i can't even wait to see the comments but i once tweeted something that was like well if you're against that statement you're against like the mm. march I think about four or five women were like, "Listen, man, my mom is at that march every single year, and she has been part of organizing in this country for women's rights mm-hmm. since before you could even think about women's mm-hmm. rights. You don't get to say that. Like, yeah. they have a reason that they feel this way, and like, if you're not going to be in, you know, and honestly, like, mm-hmm. but it was actually." quite a learning experience haranguing them. stop shaming people yeah. for having had the wrong views i mean i grew up with so many politically incorrect views yeah. now looking back I like any i was so i was incredibly way. stupid and ignorant about a lot of things yeah. but had i not had the room to learn from people who were actually willing to engage and educate me i think yeah. that's what's more important that no one's having conversations anymore yeah. no. they just shut it down before yeah. you can even have that conversation I like let kids be curious and find out things on their own by asking the questions right yeah. now with cancel culture they're too scared to even ask the questions you're absolutely you. right and people mm. get mad at you when you mess up like really yeah. mad at you And what's not talking about Pakistan? Oh, that also episode. happens, right? Yeah. People end up doubling down. Yeah, yeah. So some people will overcorrect. Some people will be too scared to speak up. So they now just like they don't take a stance on anything. Yeah. yeah. And then some people double down because no one actually likes the idea of being told that they're a horrible human being. Yeah. So then they're <laughs> going to go to extra lengths to justify what they've said. Right. Yeah. Um, and not leaving any room open for people to yeah come. Have you come across any people like this who have doubled down and like I mean we've seen a lot of it happen around the world. We've seen a lot of it yeah. happen with a lot of comedians, with a lot of people in power who have done wrong things and yeah. have been caught out very openly yeah. and then doubled down on it and then just powered through life and yeah. have not been held accountable. But he, like in Pakistan. we i feel like generally as a nation <laughs> so proudly mm. double down mm. on every everything time. on every everything time. on yeah. everything mm. let's talk about misogynistic or sec- like misogynistic behaviors or sexual harassment mm-hmm. now yes a lot of people will double down because the idea of being seen as a harasser is just like unfathomable to people but also the idea of being seen as or oh, having been disrespectful towards women is just you know it's it's not something that people will feel comfortable accepting. Oh so yeah, check up, our comment section. Yeah, so they end up doubling down. But I I once had a client who came in and said that these, you know, uh claims had been made against them and they said actually some of them are true. Uh you know, I have acted in ways that are incredibly problematic. Mm. I see where they were coming from. I don't know how to actually address it. Wow. There is no room for me to like talk about what i can do to atone for these behaviors there is just it, it's just like okay if i own up to it i am just a horrible person i'm just a harasser and you're given that label and then that yeah. label sticks with you for a very very well, long time fair, so even if they come out and harassed. well i'm not trying to say, what yeah. i'm trying to say is, is like i think in the case of harassment and stuff like that it's no one else's responsibility but your mm. own so the fact that they came to you and were like hey they're yeah. taking responsibility I, to, i think that's literally what but then what's the do. next step even let's say they go to therapy and they do all the work and they come out of it genuinely remorseful and changed mm. even then they are not owed anyone's forgiveness because it's not just like a small little niche of people who have these problematic behaviors it yeah. exists on a spectrum yeah right And if you mean we, like behaviors that can be stamped as this is a form of yes. harassment. Yes. Right now yeah, what's yeah. happening is online if it it there's a range of things that are happening. Yeah. 
anyone in that range is being slapped on with the same label. Yeah. But okay. the and offenses a joke like oh I've been me too now. Yeah, the okay. offenses are in that range. Yeah. So there are certain offenses that are like minor offenses that can be forgiven and both parties have forgiven yeah. each other that for it or whatever. That is disrespectful towards But one party. 100% yeah. wrong. But if the other party has already said that mm -hmm. they've they've forgiven and forgotten and mm -hmm. they they've moved on, they've discussed it or whatever. Mm -hmm. everyone else the the jury the 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 world stage mm. has already slapped on that label yeah. then what so for me it's like some things i i think it just depends on the person it's like the you might person, be able to be like hey, they have reached uh, what's the word i'm looking for like some form of like they've gotten closure. their forgiveness closure mm. in the situation i feel like hey this person is changed or better or at least honest mm. and you can accept it but yeah i feel like it it just Everything depends like what we're saying, right? Humans are humans. Okay, that said, that said, that yeah. said, what about the people who are throwing these labels out? Yeah. Mm. You know, let's talk about from from that point of view. Um I mean, I, I personally I feel like it's it's very like I keep using the word irresponsible but I cannot stress this enough. Mm. You cannot just throw these words around. Uh because this uh, social media it it's like there's an entire it's a whole other universe mm -hmm. and it's, it's like society with a magnifying glass multiplied by 10 mm -hmm. so if for example there are kids out there that are using these words what would you say to them so that's the difference between instagram and the therapy room right on instagram you'll have a it's an, it's an echo chamber you'll mm -hmm. have a whole bunch of people who are immediately kind of validating it there's a term called idiot compassion that I just spoke of we, earlier. Yes, please can we talk right. about that? I I heard the term and I was just like that's such an unfortunate name for a term to be used, but but it's automatically offering compassion based on like these sort of one or two kind of headlines without actually going into context. Mm -hmm. In the therapy room there is wise compassion where there is actual pushback where there is an exploration of the client's own role in whatever happened right and it's usually not black or white um can we give examples just for people to understand cuz like it is the first time i heard what it, yeah those, what is yeah. idiot compassion essentially where did the term come from or what what is it exactly i just discovered it today <laughs> today yeah on instagram Uh, no, I was reading up different articles. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, she's pretty lucky. Just some of preparing some of for some of us <laughs> send you the link. We know on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, the sort of automatic compassion for anyone who comes across as having been wronged. Mm -hmm. What it does is it reduces someone to just a victim. Oh yes, these things were done to you. You are, you know, it's it's unforgivable. But it's There one sided. No, it's very one sided. Right. and also because it gives so much sympathy and attention a lot of people are automatically going to try and like now create a narrative just based around that um in the therapy room if you see that it's a recurring pattern it's not just like down to one post if you are able to see that it's a pattern then you can at least kind of try and explore what the person's own role is and possibly allowing those situations or or maybe even Yeah, just kind of like helping them take accountability, right? For what they might also be doing over there, not victim blaming, but not reducing someone to just a victim to the extent that it takes away all agency. Yeah, even for someone who is a uh, a genuine victim, they are also a lot more things. Right, a victim does not necessarily equate a perfect person who has only taken things. Mm -hmm. uh, an example of this was a. Uh, long time ago a client who was undergoing domestic abuse and uh domestic violence and and so there was this you know like the kind of compassion and and sort of almost guilt and not being able to fully uh, understand what that experience was like it was just like okay like this person just going through something so horrific uh and then she would talk about how her relationship with her kids was also fractured because of this And then a few sessions in, she talks about how she would also be violent towards her kids, and that kind of like flipped the switch on. Okay, well, there is a certain level of abuse that she is also inflicting, right. and so you cannot bring a victim down to just a victim. You and can then, hold compassion for what they're going through, 
and at the same time still hold them accountable for what they are now doing to other people and then you explore it further in the yeah. therapy room as to why she is reacting that way also yeah without the outside environment yeah. and yeah ah, okay. but what a lot of people do is they just kind of end up saying well you know they're going through so much what can you do how can you blame them they've gone through so much right does that take away all accountability but when you are awful mm. to other people or hurting other people or you are exhibiting that kind of bad behavior i'm sorry i don't care if your mom didn't hug you enough like you don't get to be yeah this awful human being to someone just because they're within your grasp and, and they were vulnerable enough with you that you were yeah. able to do that so people Absolutely. use the term avoidant yeah. to get away with all kinds of like emotional neglect towards other people and they say yeah it's because of like i went through this 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 in childhood okay are you giving up on all responsibility for your actions then Is there's no the free will whatsoever then one of the human most beings popular. are complex creatures yeah. there's so many layers we forget about that literally we always just reduce them to just one layer yeah and then slap a label on them like they're some product in the grocery store and then send them along mm. yeah. and what they forget is that there's so much more that's happening even one this most, assumption oh no sorry yeah. i was going to say one of the most popular like meme formats mm. is really big in pakistan but i think in south asia in general it's like Oh no, he's cheating on me because his middle school girlfriend broke up with him after yeah. three days and started dating his friend. I'm not joking when I've actually heard a grown man say to me that when he was 12, his girlfriend in sixth grade like dumped him and started dating his friend, and like that's why he has a really hard time with commitment. Hmm. And I was like, "You are 43. Like, are you out of your mind? Like, what the? What no, is but if they you? come to Anum, then yeah. they'll sit down and she will explore with them why." Yeah. What are the other things that led to it, which is yeah. something that people online don't understand? And there is this assumption that a lot of people parrot now, which is hurt people hurt people. Yeah. So if you are going around causing harm, it does come from a place of having gone through harm yourself, and that's what leads to a lack so of empathy. Like you're just a jerk. Like, uh, yeah. No, but such an important thing that you brought up, where people online. uh if someone is being mean to someone mm. other people will jump on the bandwagon and start being mean to that person mm. you're doing the same thing yeah you essentially there's no conversation happening yeah. it's just but it doesn't fired. what where is the science to actually say yes everyone who hurts another person is coming from a place of having been hurt themselves what human being hasn't experienced hurt So it's it's not like a natural sort of consequence of having been hurt that you will now go around mm-hmm. causing See, the same kind of one pain. One of the tropes, right? From like I yeah. feel like a lot of times in like Western television shows, where it'll be like the bully actually has a violent or awful home life, yeah. which of course there's sympathy there. But then you came to school and like beat the shit out of my nephew, so I'm mm. like I'm a little confused what my nephew has and to do also, with your problems. So and sometimes I have to say like, look, maybe this is a stretch. Please feel free to edit this out. But when we're looking. literally like Israel Palestine right mm. now. So many people are going to bring up generational trauma this and that that's why this is going on. There is no justification at all yeah. for right for what we're witnessing and you might think that's an extreme thing but I have seen this being yeah. used as justification. But not just not a justification. People. Where is the science to actually back up that what they are doing is because of what their ancestors went through? Yeah. How do you know that these are not just actual facets of human nature? Greed, yeah, what, violence, yeah. the need to conquer. The- yeah, that's why I don't like like when there's an act of violence against women. Um one of the first things we do is like this this animal. This is not even a man. This is an animal and I'm like, "No, it was a yeah. man." And it was a human yeah. man who did a human man thing that human men do. Yeah. Even when, you know, you've seen like a mother hurt a child. Yeah. She's not even a mother. She is. She's yeah. actually a person who did mm-hmm. that. And people do terrible things all the time and I don't know mm-hmm. why we act like it's not real. You're mm-hmm. removing responsibility. Sometimes I think the trope of like the bully had a bad home life is because some bully was like, "I got to mm-hmm. And it's going to clean up my It's difficult to digest yeah. the idea that no, this is just this is human nature. Yeah, you're just getting it. And there's a lot of darkness and like not giving into that is an act of choice. Yeah. We're co- coming full circle to the true crime. Yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> we're coming full circle in this episode and we're ending on this exact same note where people who watch true crime 
I feel like I have a deeper understanding of human beings because I watch so much true crime mm. and because I also am watching it from an outsider's perspective where I'm like I want to know why this person did all of this mm. there must have been more factors other than just the fact that he was abused as a child mm. there has to be more would you could yes human beings are not are very complex and I love watching just how complex they are would you are. consider this kind of part of therapy speak like just the fact of like i want to understand people and stuff like that or no is that a different thing if everyone is taking psychology they aren't all turning into psychologists no no not that the difference right now what's happening online is that everyone thinks they're psychologists because they took a test actually that was or really they, well said <laughs> like, or or they filled in some kind mm -hmm. of form and they're like self diagnosing each other or or their their, their friends or we've mm -hmm. all done it we're not i'm doing exactly what i should not be yeah. what i'm saying that should not be happening so i'll speak not as an expert i'll give you my personal opinion which is i don't necessarily believe uh i don't buy into this idea that anyone who is out there causing harm is necessarily coming from a place of having been hurt themselves is always coming from a place of you know it was so much trauma you know that movie the joker yeah, yeah. it was so difficult to watch because the what they show is like over times it, life circumstances break someone down mm -hmm. and it almost suggests that there is no free will there comes a point at which someone can no longer function and and they don't sort of have the capacity to make the right choices anymore just given the sheer prevalence of people out there causing harm i don't think i remember when joker came out so much discourse where it was like this is just an excuse for white male rage and honestly when you look at the west just this week in the u.s they've mm -hmm. had more school shootings that it's yeah. impossible to understand they break that mm -hmm. world record constantly right mm -hmm. and quite often the shooter is what like an angry white mm -hmm. man and i think they've literally built into pop culture like well you know when you sh you b break it down a man enough another thing we're seeing right that is directly correlated the male loneliness epidemic mm. or endemic or whatever the hell they're calling it now where what are how would that epidemic be fi fixed right mm. work on yourself be kind stop thinking women are there for cleaning and breeding and mm. that's it and you're not supposed to listen to them talk to them nothing but instead they're like if women won't like us then it's their fault we're alone yeah. and like we have no control over this and yeah. it has nothing to do with us and like you're saying there's no autonomy then right yeah. like, you're just a victim of the super powerful women who are secretly by that logic everything. anyone who goes out and commits war crimes which are no less horrific than like someone who goes and shoots a bunch of kids yeah uh they're just mentally ill and yeah. they were hurt so much that they lost the capacity to make those choices so do yeah. we just kind of like do and away with any do, holding they, like, them accountable for anything every few years you get a hollywood mm. movie that's like the trauma they went through in afghanistan the trauma mm. they went through in iraq oh no look what yeah. happened to them after vietnam and it's like you're trying to yeah. make us if not romanticize but at least cushion and empathize mm -hmm. with people who went around the world and did really yeah. crazy Bad. things just because those people looked like me and you thought that made it a okay mm. you know I don't even know where we're going. Whole we other <laughs> episode. Whole other episode for real, for real. Well, thank you so much for coming in yeah. and giving us this. I mean, this uh, we love talking to you. Yeah. Honestly, if, if we, once a month, you should just come back. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. Because there's so much yeah. within this top, like within mm. the umbrella of generally of therapy, mm. of of all kinds of things that we... we we could easily just do an episode once a month and i mean it's really really complex i do want to point out that a lot of these things i am also still struggling to make sense of it mm -hmm. because there's so much of my own training and education that i am unlearning during this process yeah um so for example the concept of self love uh it was almost shoved down our throats as the main solution to all problems in life if you learn to love yourself that's it like your life is sorted other yeah. people will automatically respond to you well you'll be immune to like all forms of social rejection and it's after having gone through it for a few years that i've realized like okay it's actually been really really unfair to place that expectation on people mm -hmm. 
like people are literally ashamed of not having high self-esteem yes they really are they really are yeah. i saw this constant phrase i mean i love me some rupaul but it was like how are you gonna love someone else if you don't love yourself mm-hmm. you know what i mean and it's and i remember like when i was in the throes of my singlehood people being like well you just have to like being alone and love yourself and i swear it'll go i do love myself that's happened like we're mm-hmm. good like that and you're right the, the way you just articulated it, that it was seen as like the Band-Aid. Mm-hmm. And then everything will be fixed. Yeah. And that's just not reality. And the possibility that you can love yourself in a vacuum, but as though your brain is not somehow going to respond to social rejection. Human beings are social animals. Uh, to tell someone repeatedly, yeah, you shouldn't care what people think of you. You don't have a choice. Yeah. You shouldn't have expectations You're, of people. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm a person. I'm, I'm going to have that. I'm going to yeah. want that. I'm going to want connection. Yeah. To hold yeah. someone responsible for their entire emotional regulation, like all on their own. It is just ignorant of how the human mind works. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Of the, how the human body works. It responds to what feels like an unsafe situation. And the possibility of social uh, disapproval, of social rejection is an active threat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Self-love is a whole other topic. Mm. And uh, you're coming back. Thank you so much for coming back. Thank you for having me. For teaching us, for teaching them out there what uh, Mm -hmm. it it means to be careful with your your words. Especially Mm -hmm. when you just toss them out like that. People need to think about it. So thank thank you so much. Thank you also for letting me have the space to rant about all of this. That's that's what... (laughs) We should literally title the episode Therapy Speaks. Just I'm joking. I'm no, joking. no. Okay. And that's the end of our episode. Therapy truly did speak. Adam, thank you so much for coming on. That was a joke, guys. Terrible um, puns. And uh, we're going to have your links in the bio, I'm sure. Yes. So you can check those out below. And until our next one. Bye.